online gaming industry, or popularly known as the iGaming sector, was booming and growing in India at a compound annual growth rate of a massive 31% in last few years. From Mahindra Singh Dhoni to Virat Kohli, all big players have cashed out millions in advertising fees from the fantasy gaming apps. Not only players, but the biggest cricketing event in the world, the Indian Premier League also cashed out from these apps by giving them the top spot of the title sponsor. With 18 crore Indian users on the fantasy gaming platforms, these companies were beating the retail participation in the stock markets of India. But then, on the 11th of July 2023, all the craze came to a standstill. Online gaming, horse racing and casinos will be taxed. They will be taxed at 28% each one and they will be taxed on full face value. Soon, the industry professionals jumped in to tell the country that the party is over. The online gaming industry is now dead. But the question is, is it really dead or are we missing something? Well, let's try to figure it out today on what impact will the industry have, how the business model will work and will the sector thrive or will it even scramble to survive the wrath of the 28% GST. To understand the whole issue, we have to first understand how the tax collection system worked prior to 28% GST and how it works after 28% GST. So prior to the GST council meeting, the system that was in place was called GGR, the Gross Gaming Revenue. How did this work? Let's take a look. So say you paid 1000 rupees to enter a contest and the platform charged you 15% as the platform fees. That means 150 rupees went to the gaming platform. Out of this 150 rupees, 18% GST was paid to the government, i.e. 27 rupees as tax. This was called the GGR model or the gross gaming revenue model. Now in the current proposed model of 28% GST on the face value, things become a little scary for the platforms. Here, if you pay rupees 1000 to enter a contest, the 28% GST will be charged on the 1000 rupees and not on the platform fees. So you directly pay 280 rupees out of your 1000 rupees. Now even if the platform continues to charge its platform fees of 15% at rupees 108, you would be entering a contest at a rate of rupees 612. Now even if you double your earnings to say 612 rupees, the total amount you will receive will be 1224 rupees. Then 30% of 612 will also go to the government, i.e. 184 rupees. So what are you left now? 428 rupees. That means if you pay 1000 rupees to enter a contest and now you double your amount, you would be left with 1040 rupees. It doesn't make sense, right? But there is a catch. Starting with the online gaming, we have two categories here. First, where a player is playing against another player. That is one versus one. But usually the gaming happens in a pool of players where thousands of people are competing in a particular event and the price pool on the entry of rupees 40 also can go up to rupees 20 lakh, 50 lakh and in some cases about 1 crore. When you apply this 28% on the pool of gamers, the winning amount might decrease but the game just might survive. How? Let's take a look. So say 10 players pool in to play a fantasy sport. Everyone pays rupees 1000, so the pool size becomes rupees 10,000. If you take out 28% GST from this, it becomes 7200 rupees. Even if you take out 15% of the platform fees, the pool will still have 5700 rupees to be distributed. So now say the first person wins rupees 3000, the second one wins 1500, and the third one wins 1200. So the first one will take 1400 rupees after TDS, the second will take rupees 350 after TDS and the third one will take rupees 140 after the TDS. And all of this on an investment of rupees 1000. Now imagine this whole process in a pool of 1000 players. 
Now ask yourself, will the fantasy gaming die? Well, the math doesn't say so. The winnings might decrease. The long payouts might be reduced. But the game can go on. But the question is, will the gaming companies and the casinos continue to operate when the government is making more from their business than the total revenue these companies might generate? Or will the gamers would be willing to take a risk of making substantially less return on their investment when the probability of winning is below 50%. Only time will reveal the fate of online gaming, casinos and horse racing in India. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.